How do you stop a charging elephant? You don't take away its credit card. You show them a bull hook. The use of the bull hook is as old as that elephant joke. In fact, it's been a joke that many zoos insist on using the bull hook. But it's a sign that terrorizes an elephant just by sight. So when the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, the AZA, announces that bull hooks are being banned, something Pete has been pushing for for so long, it's a big, big deal, especially for the biggest deals, the elephants. Next on the PETA podcast. Welcome to the PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this behind-the-scenes look at PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. Here we talk to the key players at PETA and the movement and ask them about how animal rights change their lives and how they stay motivated to make the world a better place for the animals. On today's episode, the AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, Ban on bullhooks. It's a big deal. This is wonderful news. It's right up there with wrangling first phasing out elephants and then closing down altogether, um, which was a signal that circuses need to stop using animals or go out of business. It's up there on that level when it comes to elephants. PETA has fought for decades to end the use of bull hooks and AZA zoos. This has been a long standing issue that we have have pushed the AZA on and it's come incrementally and we still hadn't gotten that commitment, that statement from the AZA that bull hooks are are not acceptable. That statement is finally here. Rachel Matthews, PETA Foundation Deputy Director of Captive Law Enforcement, says the bullhook ban will impact the nearly 300 elephants in captivity in the U.S. and have a ripple effect at zoos across the world. The details and why the ban is important next on the PETA Podcast. But first, thanks again for joining us here at the PETA Podcast. Please share a link with friends and let them know that the animals have a voice on the PETA Podcast. And if you've just found us, welcome and keep binging. There's lots to listen to on the PETA Podcast. Your questions on veganism, the latest in all the dead horses in America's horse racing industry, Frank Conversations with PETA founder Ingrid Newkirk. It's all available 24-7 wherever you catch your podcasts. Now, if you really want to help the animals, you can always hit the Donate Now button at PETA.org. And if you're high-tech and have Amazon's Alexa, it's as easy as saying, Alexa, donate to PETA. And now to our episode. It's called a bullhook, but it's really an elephant torture tool. PETA helped get bullhooks banned in circuses and even forced Ringling to shut down. The next step has been zoos, and with the AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, announcement of a bullhook ban, well, it's a milestone for animal rights and for PETA, which has been pushing for the ban for years. I talked to PETA's Rachel Matthews about how the ban will be phased in and the current state of elephants and zoos on the PETA podcast. When the Association of Zoos and Aquariums come come out with a policy, I mean, it doesn't happen every day, right? And when it does, this is a big thing that they've come out with. That's exactly right. Today's announcement that AZA zoos will phase out the use of bullhooks represents a sea change that will ripple all across the globe not just to AZA accredited zoos, but to any facility that uses elephants. And animal circuses, roadside zoos, and animal abusing tourist traps should take note that the public doesn't want animals to be exploited, separated from their families, or abused for entertainment. And what is the the role of AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums? What is its uh, analogous, uh, or what is its equivalent that I mean, do, when they say something, does it make people quake in their boots if they have a zoo and a, an aquarium? Do they set the standard? Are they the model for how things should be done? Or do they have uh, the impact of the rule of law? They don't have the impact of the rule of law, but the AZA is a national accrediting body that um, sets out standards of animal care and education and conservation that zoos must meet in order to be members. 
So most of the larger zoos around the country, the better funded zoos, the ones that have larger enclosures, tend to be AZA accredited zoos. Um, they're incredibly influential, though. And so their decision to phase out the use of bullhooks in their zoos will have a ripple effect across the country and across the globe. So when the AZA says something, everyone who's a reputable zoo, and, you know, I use that term advisedly, but because zoos are kind of, you know, one of those things that it's debatable whether they should even exist or to what degree they should exist. But if AZA says something, the primary zoos in major cities and in Europe, they will pay heed. And to what degree do they uh, use uh, bull hooks now? I mean, is it is it very common among the, the so-called reputable zoos? Use of bull hooks is totally disappearing in zoos. Uh, the vast majority of zoos already have abandoned bull hooks, and that's thanks to efforts by PETA and bull hook bans and other pressures from the public for zoos to stop using bull hooks. About 10 years ago, the AZA required its members to adopt something called restricted contact or protected contact management of elephants, which is where there's always a barrier between keepers and elephants. And in that system, bull hooks, there's no reason to be using bull hooks. It's a totally different system of training. And so once the AZA mandated that and that phased in, most zoos went ahead and just abandoned bull hooks altogether. So what percentage would you say are still using bull hooks at all? According to the AZA's announcement, um, they, they say the vast majority of zoos are not using bull hooks. Um, I'm not sure what that represents. Um, but I would say there's only a handful of accredited zoos that are still relying on bull hooks. I can only think of a couple off the top of my head. Uh, name one. The uh, Roger Williams Park Zoo in Rhode Island is one example, which is really interesting because Rhode Island was the first state to ban bull hooks, but there's an exemption in the law for the zoo specifically. Uh, so there's a handful here in America. How about in Europe? Are are books used uh, more more frequently there? I'm not as sure about the statistics um, when it comes to how many European zoos are still using bull hooks versus protected contact, but uh, the European Association of Zoos and Aquariums is definitely pretty far behind. Uh, they recently announced that their zoos must adopt protected contact, which the, the AZA announced in 2010, um, and the European Association is giving zoos a 10-year phase or time to phase in the use of protected contact, which is just far too long because really zoos need to end the use of bull hooks and implement protected contact right now. So this is a key thing, this phase in period, this short phase in period for this new policy. And that sends a, a, a clear message that AZA is not going to be tolerating people who are asking for exceptions or trying to get around it. Um, so the phase in period in the policy that the AZA has announced gives zoos one year to stop using bull hooks in the daily care of elephants. And by 2023, bull hooks should not be used for anything at all. There's a reason why people do use bull hooks in the circus industry, and that's because they're effective. Good for the trainer, but bad for the animal. Yeah, there's only one use for a bull hook, and that's to inflict pain or instill the fear of pain. So in facilities that rely on bull hooks like circuses, elephant calves are forcefully torn from their mothers, tied down for days or months until their wills are broken, and then they're poked, prodded, and jabbed and beaten until they learn to do tricks on cue. So that eventually, even the sight of a bull hook elicits fear, and that fear sticks with the elephant for her entire life. So that gives trainers total dominance over the animals, and it's the only reason that an elephant will give rides for hours or stand on her head in a circus ring. And, and it's also the only reason why the trainers or the the the, uh, the circus people resort to it, because it's effective. But as you mentioned, there are other effective ways, right? That's right. Well, in circuses, circuses need to abandon the use of elephants altogether. The trainers in circuses always have a bull hook in hand, and that's because elephants are massive, dangerous, and intelligent animals, and they can hurt people 
you know, by accident or on purpose, and they have. And so the bull hook is there as a reminder that they better listen to their trainers. They better not step out of line or else they'll they'll take a beating. It points out, though, that the use of it is pervasive, whether they harm the elephant or not, because the psychological terror is still there. The bull hook serves as a constant and terrifying reminder of physical abuse so that the mere sight of one is distressing to any elephant who's been trained with one. And so this would get rid of all all these. You can't even hold it and show it to the elephant, right? That's right. Modern facilities began abandoning bull hooks and this sort of fear-based training decades ago, and instead they care for elephants in what's called protected contact, where elephants and humans are protected from one another by a barrier. And that doesn't exist in the circus. Um, And in this sort of system, elephants have a choice about whether they want to participate in training. They can walk away if they're uncomfortable or fearful. And the animals learn using rewards instead of punishment. So it's safer for everyone, the humans and the elephants alike. In a previous question, I talked about uh, uh, the use of the bull hooks in, in, in uh, circuses. And then you quickly said, well, circuses shouldn't have animals. Circuses shouldn't have elephants. I mean, this is a kind of a, a, a real delicate subject because here we praise or here PETA praises the elimination of the bull hook, which is a step, but really we should be for the abolition of the use of animals in circuses, correct? Absolutely. In in circuses, um, PETA has long fought for an end to the use of any sort of animals in circuses. And the major place where PETA first made inroads was with bull hooks and elephants. Um, so that started with bull hook bans in cities and a couple of states across the country. And now it's we're moving towards broader bans on the use of wild animals in circuses. Well, I actually, I, I sort of misspoke. I said circuses, but I really meant zoos. I mean, there's still some debate about whether zoos are good things or, you know, can you be a good zoo, I guess is the question. It's important to understand that accredited zoos, those accredited by this, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, are making positive changes for elephant welfare. So that means that they are doing things like banning bull hooks or working to give elephants more choice and control of their lives. And they're offering them enrichment to stimulate their minds and bodies. Things like um, branches of trees to strip bark from or ponds to wallow in. But you're right. The fact remains that elephants suffer in captivity and it's impossible to adequately meet their needs in captivity, which is why PETA has long called for an end to the keeping of elephants in captivity. And we're going to continue to push the AZA on this point. We want zoos to phase out their elephant exhibits, end captive breeding efforts, cease the capture of elephants from the wild, and ensure that the existing elephants in their care are living under the best possible captive conditions. Now, how close are we to that ideal stage? Uh, How many elephants are in captivity now? Because I imagine you have to account for all of them, right, in in the legitimate zoos? Yeah, we're moving in that direction. Um, Unfortunately, though, there are still zoos, uh, particularly zoos, uh, accredited zoos, that do want to continue having elephants in their exhibits. So they're resorting to invasive breeding procedures or you know, a couple zoos in the past have imported elephants from the wild, and there's rumblings that more zoos may be pursuing imports in the future. And that's because the population of elephants in captivity in the U.S. is pretty steady, steadily de- declining. There's only about 260 elephant predated zoos in the United States. And so when you have 260, do they, are there instances of domestic elephants elephants who breed in these zoos or are they trying to um you know replenish what you know the, their stock that way or is that something that's verboten aza zoos are very much trying to breed elephants and captive breeding is overall a failure when it comes to elephants um for elephants in zoos They experience boredom, stress, a lack of exercise, and inadequate facilities. And so they develop abnormal behaviors like rocking and swaying, 
that are never seen in the wild. And on top of that, they end up having low life expectancies, health complications such as uh, uh, foot problems, nail cracks, abscesses, obesity, things that shorten elephants' lives by decades. When the policy goes into effect, all the zoos have this phase-in period, and you really think it's going to have an impact on on elephant care and and how elephants are treated in general? I think it will. I mean, the vast majority of zoos, accredited zoos with elephants right now are no longer using bull hooks. So it's not going to change anything for those facilities. But there is still a small number of facilities within the AZA that are still using bull hooks, and they're going to have a choice. They're either going to have to forfeit their accreditation or they can do the right thing for elephants and stop using bull hooks. I think this is also going to be really influential when it comes to what regulators think is acceptable, what policymakers think is acceptable, because they can no longer point to the AZA as not having taken a stand against the use of bull hooks. I, I don't want to mix circuses and zoos. I know that PETA has worked hard to you know, get rid of circuses. Ringling's gone. But the zoos still exist, and that's where the focus is on, 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 on elephants. But the AZA has sway over these so-called, you know, major zoos. But what about the roadside zoos? Are they going to start looking over their shoulder? Are they going to? How are they going to react to all this? I think the roadside zoos, well, first of all, there aren't all that many roadside zoos that still have elephants in captivity. The vast majority of elephants in the United States are either at circuses or in AZA zoos. But for the handful of unaccredited zoos, of roadside zoos that have elephants, part of the reason they haven't chose accreditation, other than the fact that some of them just simply can't meet the standards of animal care required, but part of the reason for some of them is that they are clinging to bull hooks. They, they still want to rely on that fear and dominance that a bull hook gives them. And that's because they like to do things like, um, give rides on elephants. That's at the Natural Bridge Zoo in Virginia. Um, or at the Pittsburgh Zoo, they refused to change their ways and adopt protected contact. And they left the AZA years ago because they were clinging to bull hooks. So I think it's going to be a slow change for some other zoos, and some zoos may choose never to change because um, they'd rather rather continue to use their bull hooks. But ultimately, this is going to have a ripple effect across the globe. Yeah, but once again, the the presence of a bull hook, whether you strike an animal with it or not, just holding it and showing it to an animal is it terrorizing? Absolutely it is. Bull hooks are used to strip elephants of any thought of free will from the time that they're a young age so that they remember it into adulthood. It serves as a constant reminder of physical punishment, and the mere sight of a bull hook is distressing to any elephant who's been trained with one, which is why there's no such thing as humane use of the bull hook. Even just holding it is inhumane. And and that's what experts have argued in favor of bullhook bans for the for for years. And that's why cities have chosen to ban bullhooks because they realize that bullhooks are inhumane, even the mere presence of one. And there are are better ways to provide elephants with care. The protected contact system is what most zoos end up is what zoos have adopted, and that's where there's always a barrier in between a keeper and an elephant so that the elephant is protected from the human and the human is protected from the elephant. And positive reinforcement rather than punishment is the primary um, motivator for shaping elephant behaviors. So uh, like like the way you would do uh, with a dog, uh, treats and that kind of thing? Exactly. So what zoos do in protected contact is um, they, they teach elephants to position themselves against the barrier, basically using a target. So the elephant learns that when they touch a target with their trunk or shoulder or, or hindquarters, that they get a treat. And usually there's a, a clicker involved or a whistle or something like that. It's, it's the same kind of training that's, that's used 
across all sorts of different species. And it provides some motivation to the elephants who like the food, but they also have the ability to, to leave if they want. If they don't want to participate in training, there's nobody forcing the elephant to. They can walk off if they choose. Hmm. And so with this AZA ban, it, it is a ban, right? Yes, it's I mean it's it's a phase out so that by 2023 any use of the bullhook will be banned. All right, so with the AZA ban, cities that have zoos that aren't following this ban, should they follow the path of the bullhook bans that other cities and other states have passed? And that's actually what happened in Pittsburgh. Um, the Pittsburgh Zoo, as I mentioned, um, several years ago, parted ways with the AZA because it didn't want to adopt protected contact handling because ultimately that means getting rid of bullhooks. So it chose to leave the AZA. Well, the city of Pittsburgh turned around and banned bullhooks and the zoo isn't exempted. So um, the jury's still out on whether the city is going to actually enforce the law and, and the zoo's careful, careful about not showing bull hook, hooks to the public. But ultimately, that is one great example of a city following up when the zoo chose not to change. And now, Rachel, you've been with Peter for some time working with Kale. To you personally, how do you take the news? What does it mean in terms of the kind of work you continue to do, and how does it motivate you? I mean, this is wonderful news. This It's right up there with wrangling first phasing out elephants and then closing down altogether, um, which was a signal that circuses need to stop using animals or go out of business. Um, it's, it's up there on that level when it comes to elephants. PETA has fought for decades to end the use of bull hooks and AZA zoos. This has been a, a long standing issue that we have, have pushed the AZA on. And it's come incrementally first with, uh, requiring protected contact at zoos. Um, and we still hadn't gotten that commitment, that statement from the AZA that bull hooks are, are not acceptable for use in training elephants. And that, that statement is finally here. Rachel Matthews, PETA Foundation Deputy Director of Captive Animal Law Enforcement on the AZA's bullhook ban in the training of elephants, something PETA's been fighting for for years. As you'll recall, PETA's motto reads in part, animals are not ours to use for entertainment and opposes speciesism, a human supremacist worldview. Read more about the ban and take action at PETA.org. That's our program for today. You can contact us at PETA.org. You can find me on Twitter at Emil Amok. That's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K. Or on ALDEF.org slash blog. That's A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. Or on AMOK.com. Once again, thank you for listening. Check out all our episodes on Apple Podcasts where you can rate and review the show. It helps get the word out about the issues you care about. Music is provided by Carbon Works. Check them out on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Join us again next time for more insight into animal rights and the fight for a cruelty free world on the PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo. <laughs>